When Abraham Lincoln went to Congress for his single term in the late 1840s, he corresponded with his law partner back in Springfield, a man named William Herndon. Lincoln and Herndon had been law partners since 1844. Herndon was much younger than Lincoln. He was the junior partner, and he was Lincoln's third law partner. Uh, and they had a, a two-man law firm in Springfield, and Lincoln's letters to Herndon are very revealing. There's one in particular on July 10th, 1848, that offers advice. This is a, a very subtle but important letter in Lincoln's canon of writings. He writes to Herndon, Dear William, your letter covering the newspaper slips, meaning the newspaper clippings, was received last night. And then he writes, the subject of that letter is exceedingly painful to me, and I cannot but think that there is some mistake in your impression of the motives of the old men. Now, we don't know exactly what was so exceedingly painful to Lincoln, but it appears that Herndon was complaining about um, young men, particularly in the Whig party around Springfield, being held back by older Whig leaders, like perhaps Lincoln, from the, the credit they were due. Lincoln writes, I suppose I am now one of the old men, and I declare on my veracity, meaning my integrity, which I think is good with you, that nothing could afford me more satisfaction than to learn that you and others of my young friends at home were doing battle in the contest and endearing themselves to the people and taking a stand far above any I have ever been able to reach in their admiration. Lincoln appears to be referring to the future of young Whig political aspirants uh, like Herndon himself. I cannot conceive, Lincoln writes, that other old men feel differently. Of course, I cannot demonstrate what I say, but I was young once, and I am sure I was never ungenerously thrust back. Now this is tricky because Lincoln certainly uh, was someone who had an astounding rise in politics. He entered the political field in 1832, he was only 23 years old. He lost that first race, but then he had a remarkable rise, winning every election afterwards, becoming a leader of the Whigs in the State General Assembly, and then now a, a congressman. But there were moments when he was ungenerously thrust back, not always by older men, but sometimes by rivals in the party. And he certainly had experienced a period of frustration during the three or four years just prior to winning his seat in Congress in 1846. But responding to complaints from Herndon, Lincoln seems almost at a loss for words. He writes, I hardly know what to say. And then he gives the best possible advice for anybody in any age facing any kind of obstacle. He says, the way for a young man to rise is to improve himself every way he can, never suspecting that anybody wishes to hinder him. Allow me to assure you, he writes, that suspicion and jealousy never did help any man in any situation. This seems to be something Lincoln did take to heart. He was subject to a lot of jealousy and suspicion during the course of his career, up until that point in 1848 and most certainly beyond when he became president, but he developed very thick skin. He was always able to, to shrug off attacks, cuts, humiliations, in a way that is uh, very effective and also very admirable. He writes to Herndon, there may sometimes be ungenerous attempts to keep a young man down, and they will succeed too, if he allows his mind to be diverted from its true channel to brood or overthink the attempted injury. Cast about and see if this feeling has not injured every other person you have ever known to fall into it. This is something Lincoln held to heart. He was not someone who brooded over slights, or at least he didn't appear to. He said later as president on numerous occasions that his favorite expression in politics was that there needs to be a short statute of limitations, meaning you have to forgive and forget and move forward. And this is what, in effect, he is telling Herndon. Now, in what I said, he writes, I'm sure you will suspect nothing but sincere friendship. I would save you from what he calls a fatal error. You have been a laborious, studious young man. You are far better informed on almost all subjects than I've ever been. Herndon was an incredibly well-educated and voracious reader. Lincoln, of course, only had a be about a year of formal schooling. You cannot fail, Lincoln writes to Herndon, in any laudable, or meaning admirable, object unless you allow your mind to be improperly directed. I have some advantage of you in world's experience merely by being older, and it is this that induces me to advise. This is Abraham Lincoln as an older brother or as a father 
offering advice to a younger man or a younger woman, to anybody who aspires to do well. And it's good advice to follow. It's advice that he largely kept uh, and, and uh, believed in, and uh, it's a kind of eternal uh, admonition for success.